Section. Introduction. We're going to talk about how we can enhance the performance of large language models, LLNs, by aligning them with human preference data. The typical method, known as reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, involves learning a reward model from human preferences. This reward model is then used to train the LLM. However, a recent alternative approach skips the reward model training and directly uses human preferences to train the LLM, a method known as direct preference optimization, DPO. In both cases, the effectiveness of the approach is limited by the size and quality of the human preference data, and in the case of RLHF, the quality of the reward model. To overcome this limitation, we propose a new approach, training a self-improving reward model that continually updates during LLM alignment. The idea is to create an agent that has all the desired abilities during training, rather than dividing them into separate models like a reward model and a language model. By integrating the reward model into the same system, we can facilitate task transfer between the reward modeling task and the instruction following tasks. We introduce self-rewarding language models, agents that can both generate responses for given prompts and create and evaluate new instruction following examples to add to their own training set. We train these models using an iterative DPO framework. The process starts with a seed model. In each iteration, the model generates candidate responses for new prompts and assigns rewards to them. This process is known as self-instruction creation. A preference dataset is built from the generated data, and the next iteration of the model is trained via DPO. Our experiments show that the instruction following performance improves with self-rewarding LLM alignment compared to the baseline seed model. More importantly, the reward modeling ability, which is no longer fixed, also improves. This means that the model can provide a higher quality preference dataset to itself in each iteration. While this effect may eventually plateau in real-world settings, it opens up the possibility of obtaining reward models, and hence LLMs, that are superior to those trained from the original human-authored seed data alone. Our approach starts with a base pre-trained language model and a small amount of human-annotated seed data. We aim to build a model that can do two things at once generate a high-quality response to a user request and create new instruction following examples to add to its own training set. The model generates candidate responses and then judges their quality, acting as its own reward model. This eliminates the need for an external reward model. The self-created preference data is used as a training set. Our self-alignment procedure is iterative, with the goal of each model improving over the last. Because the model can improve its generation ability and act as its own reward model, the reward model itself can improve through these iterations. This deviates from standard practices where the reward model is fixed. We believe this can increase the potential for self-improvement of these learning models, removing a constraining bottleneck. Section Summary In this section, the authors introduce self-rewarding language models, SRLMs, that possess the abilities of instruction following and generating and evaluating new instruction following examples. These models are trained using an iterative framework called Iterative Direct Preference Optimization, DPO, where the models generate candidate responses and assign rewards to them. The generated data is used to build a preference dataset, and the next iteration of the model is trained using DPO. The authors find that SRLMs not only improve instruction following performance but also improve the quality of the reward model itself, allowing for potential superior performance compared to models trained solely on human-authored data. Section. Initialization. We start with a set of initial data, which we call, Instruction Fine-Tuning, IFT, data. This data consists of general instruction examples created by humans. We use these examples to train our model in a supervised manner, starting from a pre-existing language model. We also have another set of data, which we call, Evaluation Fine-Tuning, EFT, data. This data includes examples of evaluation prompts and their corresponding results. Although it's not strictly necessary, we've found that using this data can improve our model's performance. In this data, 
the model is asked to evaluate the quality of a response to a given instruction. The evaluation includes a justification and a final score, out of 5 in our experiments. This data helps train our model to act as a reward model. Once we've trained our model using both the IFT and F data, we can then use it to modify its own training set. This involves generating a new prompt using a few shot prompting technique, creating multiple diverse responses to the prompt, and then using the model's evaluation ability to score these responses. We also have a set of human annotated examples, which we use to train our model in a supervised manner. This training starts with the IFT and F data and is then supplemented with additional data through AI feedback. After the self-instruction creation process, we can add more examples to the training data. We call this AI feedback training, AIFT, data. We've tried two types of feedback, preference pairs and positive examples only. Preference pairs involve creating training data from the highest and lowest scoring responses. Positive examples only involve adding examples where the response received a perfect score. We found that preference pairs yield better results. Our training process is iterative, meaning we train a series of models, each one using data created by the previous model. In our experiments, we used the LAMA 270B as our base model. For the IFT data, we used human-authored examples from the Open Assistant dataset. We selected 3,200 high-quality examples in English. We compared our model to a baseline model that was only fine-tuned using this data. Section Summary The section describes the initialization process for training a language model. It starts with a seed set of human-authored instruction examples, which are used for supervised fine-tuning. Additionally, a seed set of evaluation examples is provided to train the model to evaluate the quality of responses. The model can then generate its own training data through self-modification, and this data is used for further training iterations. The overall procedure involves training a series of models, with each model using augmented training data created by the previous model. Section. FT seed data. We've used the Open Assistant data to create a training and evaluation dataset. This data includes multiple human responses for each prompt, ranked by quality. We've used this data to create a dataset for training our language model to act as a judge of responses. We've formatted this data to include the scoring criteria, the instruction given, and the response to be evaluated. We've used a baseline model to generate evaluations for each input and included them in the training set if their scores align with the human rankings in the dataset. This process resulted in 1775 training examples and 531 evaluation examples. We've assessed our self-rewarding models based on two criteria, their ability to follow instructions and their ability to evaluate responses. We've compared the performance of different models using GPT-4 as an evaluator over 256 test prompts. If the evaluations from GPT-4 disagreed, we counted the result as a tie. We've also reported results in the Alpaca Eval 2.0 leaderboard format, which is evaluated over 805 prompts, and calculated the win rate against the baseline GPT-4 turbo model based on GPT-4 judgments. We've evaluated the correlation with human rankings on the evaluation set we derived from the Open Assistant dataset. Each instruction has on average 2.85 responses with given rankings. We've measured the pairwise accuracy, which is how many times the order of the ranking between any given pair agrees between the model's evaluation and the human ranking. We've also measured the exact match count, which is how often the total ordering is exactly the same for an instruction. We've also reported the Spearman correlation and Kendall's tau. Finally, We've reported how often the responses that the model scores a perfect 5 out of 5 are rated as the highest ranked by humans. For training, we've used different learning rates, batch sizes, and dropout rates for different models. We've also used a beta value of 0.1 for some models. We've performed early stopping by saving a checkpoint every 200 steps and evaluating generations using Claude 2 on 253 validation examples derived from various sources.
To generate new prompts, we've used a fixed model, Llama 2 Chat 70B with 8-shot prompting, while the other parts of the creation pipeline, generating the response, and evaluating it, use the model being trained. For candidate response generation, we've sampled four candidate responses with a temperature of 0.7 and AP value of 0.9. When evaluating candidate responses, we've generated these evaluations multiple times and taken the average. We've added 3,964 preference pairs to form the AIFT, M1, dataset used to train M2 via DPO, and 6,942 pairs to form AIFT, M2, used to train M3. We found that adding the evaluation fine-tuning, F, task to training does not impact instruction following performance compared to using instruction fine-tuning, IFT, data alone. This is a positive result because it means the increased capability of a model to self-reward does not affect its other skills. We can thus use IFT plus F training as iteration 1, M1, of our self-rewarding model, and then run further iterations. Iteration 2 of self-rewarding training, M2, provides superior instruction following to iteration 1, M1 with 55.5% wins for M2 compared to only 11.7% for M1 in a head-to-head -head evaluation. It provides similar gains over the SFT baseline as well, 49.2% wins versus 14.5% wins. Clearly, there is a large jump in performance from M1 to M2 by using the preference data AIFT, M1, provided by the reward model from iteration 1. Section Summary the EFT seed data from the Open Assistant dataset is used to create LLM as a judge data by constructing evaluation fine tuning sets. The performance of self rewarding models is evaluated based on their ability to follow instructions and their ability as a reward model. The training hyperparameters for SFT and DPO are specified, and the self instruction creation process is described. The results show that adding the F task to training does not affect instruction following performance, and iteration 2 of self-rewarding training provides superior instruction following compared to iteration 1 and the SFT baseline. Section. Iteration 3. Improves over iteration 2. In our third iteration, we've made significant improvements over the second iteration. We've seen a substantial increase in the win rate, with our third model, M3, winning 47.7% of the time compared to the second model, M2, which only won 12.5% of the time in a direct comparison. Similarly, M3's win rate over the SFT baseline also increased to 62.5%, which is a significant improvement over M2's win rate of 9.8%. These improvements were achieved by training M3 using preference data provided by the reward model from the second iteration. Our self-rewarding models performed well on the Alpaca Eval 2 leaderboard. We noticed that with each training iteration, the win rates over GPT-4 Turbo improved, starting from 9.94% in the first iteration, increasing to 15.38% in the second, and finally reaching 20.44% in the third iteration. Our third iteration model outperformed several existing models, including Claude 2, Gemini Pro, and GPT-40613. It's worth noting that many of these competing models use proprietary alignment data or targets distilled from stronger models. In contrast, our self-rewarding model begins with a small set of seed data and then generates targets and rewards from the model itself for further training iterations. We also experimented with an alternative self-training procedure which involved adding high-quality self-instruction creation examples to supervised fine-tuning. However, this approach didn't yield any improvements. For instance, even after adding 11,254 examples that scored 5 out of 5 and optimizing the mixing weight in training, the win rate against the SFT baseline remained the same at 29%. We conducted a data distribution analysis using ATSNE visualization of the IFT, EFT, and AIFT, M1, data. We found a good overlap between the IFT and AIFT, M1, examples, which is desirable, while the EFT examples were located in a different part of the embedding space.
We also observed that the model was learning to generate longer responses with each iteration, which could be a factor in its improved performance. We found that adding evaluation fine-tuning F data into training improved the model's performance compared to training with instruction fine-tuning IFT data alone. The IFT data covers a wide range of general instruction tasks, which gives the SFT baseline the ability to evaluate responses. However, the F data provides more examples of this specific task, leading to improvements across all five metrics measured. For instance, the pairwise accuracy agreement with humans increased from 65.1% to 78.7%. We also found that performing a round of self-reward training improved the model's ability to provide self-rewards for the next iteration, in addition to its improved instruction following ability. For example, the second model, M2, which was trained using the reward model from the first model, M1, showed improved performance on all five metrics compared to M1. The third model, M3, further improved several of these metrics compared to M2. For instance, pairwise accuracy increased from 80.4% to 81.7%. This performance gain was achieved despite there being no additional F data provided. We hypothesize that as the model becomes better at general instruction following, it also improves at the LLM as a judge task. Section Summary in iteration 3, there is a significant improvement over iteration 2, with M underscore 3 winning 47.7% of the time compared to only 12.5% for M underscore 2 in head-to-head -head evaluations. The self-rewarding models also perform well on the Alpaca Eval 2 leaderboard, outperforming existing models such as Claude 2, Gemini Pro, and GPT-40613. Section Importance of the LLM as a judge prompt. We've been focusing on the importance of using the LLM as a judge prompt in our experiments. We initially tested various prompts to determine the most effective one. For instance, we tried a prompt that proposed a five point scale, but it presented the options as multiple choice within different quality categories. However, we found that our prompt, which describes the points as additive and covers various quality aspects, performed significantly better. When we used the SFT baseline, our prompt achieved a 65.1% pairwise accuracy, while the other prompt only reached 26.6% pairwise accuracy. In terms of related work, there's a growing interest in research on automatically improving or self-correcting large language models. A recent survey tried to summarize this topic, but it's a rapidly evolving field with many promising new works emerging. One approach is reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, where a fixed reward model is trained from human preference data. This model is then used to train via reinforcement learning, for example, using proximal policy optimization, PPO. This reward signal essentially comes from a model but it's distilled from human data. Other methods, like direct preference optimization, DPO, avoid training the reward model entirely and directly train the LLM using human preferences. There are also other methods, including pairwise cringe optimization, PCO, which has been shown to outperform DPO and PPO. Another approach is reinforcement learning from AI feedback, RLAIF, where an LLM is used to provide feedback and refine responses. This data is then used to train a separate, fixed reward model, which is then used for RL training. Some researchers have compared RLAIF and RLHF procedures and found that the methods they compared perform roughly equally. Improving LLMs can also be achieved through data augmentation and curation. Several methods have improved LLMs by creating training data to augment fine-tuning. For example, the self-instruct method creates prompts and responses for self-instruction, which can be used to improve a base LLM. Other approaches have created training data by distilling from powerful LLMs, showing that a weaker LLM can then perform well. Finally, Using the LLM as a judge prompt to evaluate language models has become a standard approach and is being used to train reward models or curate data. While some works create training data to train an LLM to perform well as a judge, 
it's not common to combine this training with general instruction following skills, as we do in our work.